Hi guys, it's that time again, which is better? And it will be another Primal Fear special and the albums we're going to be looking at are Delivering the Black and Metal Commando. So looking at Delivering the Black, Primal Fear often get looked at as the limited evolution cliche, as if this needs to be pointed out to anyone with even the slightest familiarity with bands like Iron Save, Savior, Gravedigger and Paragon, all of which are stylistically quite similar to this German speed power metal institution and have enjoyed a similarly limited style, stylistic evolution but then again when compared with these three particular bands Primal Fear has actually made a few evolutionary strides that account for the actually quite different character of this album when compared to other albums. The fact that he's a major boost thanks to the inclusion of some riveting speed numbers like Rural Faction and Road to Asylum and his further comp permitted by a guitar sound that is a bit more punchy and a drum sound that's a bit more compressed than the last two albums. All the same, Skeepers tends to rule the musical favour of his high-pitched blend of Halford and Conklin Wells. He manages to turn out a somewhat heartfelt crew in time from time. A pretty strong nod to the much abused experimentation on new religion makes a clear shown on the ballad Born With A Broken Heart which brings Liv Christine into the mix for a guest appearance. Though in a less pronounced fashion than was the case with Simone Simmons seven years ago. Likewise, I can't help but hear a similar vibe from their epic and spellbinding One Night in December and with that of Fight with the Darkness. Though this long winded semi symphonic anthem is a bit more animated and features a wild, mounting like guitar display out of Magnus Carlson. Another important figure whose presence has definitely served in further evolving Primal Fear's sound, both in the technical and atmospheric department. But all things considered, this album isn't a full uh, affirmation of an experimental road that has characterised much of this band's post nuclear blast material. Indeed, apart from the intoxicating epic experience that is One Night in December, the strong points of this album are definitely backreaching earlier influences. One of, one of the truly powerful examples of the conservative approach is actually an all out but full out revert to the Herman Frank days of except that this is when death comes knocking. Judges along at a mid tempo yet has a perfect mix of hooks and progression to keep the listener full, fully enthralled for its seven minute duration. And similarly, the album's closing song, In Seminoid, turns on Afterburners, something fierce, and this is like a faster and more triumphant sequel to the title track off of Nuclear Fire, which complete with another mass soda fest to rival that of Malmsteen. When talking about Carlson in this, Carlson in this respect, <coughs> some may continue to plead to the idea that a band needs to either rewrite their first three albums again and again, stay on top of things, or continue to create a new subgenre with each album. For the rest of the music world, with a taste for both metal, past and present, this is to this proves to be one of the best albums to come out of 2014 in this. 2014. The riff work sees a particularly needed uptick and sees a strong degree of depth. It still has a healthy dose of painkiller and is expected which is expected, but what it boasts in punishing fury also tempers with a level of relaxed contrast that keeps it from being one dimensional. It's rhythm with cliches yet doesn't turn out as one of the as one when all the parts fit together but most important of all it delivers above and beyond all Call of Duty. So switching gears we're going to look at Metal Commando. While the old adage of times continuing to change has largely held true there are certain bands where it applies only to the bare minimum. It may be it may look like a misnomer but there's actually a fairly prominent degree of metal conservatism afoot even with the new birth decade. And one of the more stall examples of not messing with a winning formula in Primal Fear has offered up yet another example why less can be indeed more when it comes to the stylic evolution. Although they've been quite consistent in their qualitative output over the years, something is a fire beneath this German speed metal, speed metal proverb, proverbial in 2016 and thus one of the most ambitious offerings in Rule Breaker was, was unleashed. It was immediately followed by a humbler, less overly epic retread of the band's early period at, at around the time of the millennium dubbed Apocalypse. This was an album that was impressive but just a tad bit shy of the end will be all power metal opus that the title might suggest. Metal Commando 
could be seen as an unofficial sequel to the colossal undertaking that was Rulebreaker, as it follows a similar formula of running out crushes speed metal and old school bangers with a more ambitious compositional fare, all the while showcasing a stellar engineering production ex- expertise of Jacob Hansen. The landscape is naturally not identical as then drummer Francesco Giovino departed it the fold a year a year ago. But a more than that replacement has been acquired in the ex Metallium and current Gamma Ray hitman Michael Ear, who achieves an equally tr- thunderous sound as his predecessor. Likewise, this new outing sees Paramorphia returning to its former home, Nuclear Blast, after about 14 years to the day that he had moved for the extended stay with Frontier Records after Matt Bass. Matt the basis Matt Sinner left his position at the former label. If nothing else, this being the 13th album by this fold is just a lucky outcome than what the number would otherwise entail. Despite the signature sound, sound, sound of this band being far more straightforward than streamlined back in the mid-2000s when they ended their first run with Nuclear Blast, their return sees the they maintain the grandiose power metal steeped formula that they've been developing since 2000's New Religion. The majority of their included and material conforms to that modernized punchy extension of Jesus Priest and accept influences that span the 80s and early 90s but touched up with a rich and denser mixture of melody and harmony made possible in no small part by the participation of three highly skilled guitarists for the metallic anvils like the opener I'm Alive and Howl of the Banshee walk with a similar beaten path to that of Priest's painkiller but dressed up with a more humically guitar lines while overt crutches like My Name Is Fear and Afterlife but and they blur the lines between speed and thrash metal whereas the swift yet chief of fan of Halo ups the power metal ante and flirts more with Halloween territory. Power of Fear is a name that most readily associated with speed metal there is obviously a lot more to this band within their comparatively narrow stylistic niche. Slower groovy songs like Along Came the Devil and Lost and F- The Lost and Forgotten lay on the heaviness of the aftermath balls to the wall. Injected with a more mechanistic punch akin to something from Jugulator, and also afford more opportunities to the frontman Ralph Schieber to display his brilliant vocal gymnastics after the spirit of Rob Halford and Harry Conklin. Likewise, Ralph's versatility as a vocalist and the corresponding adaptability of his bandmates is on full display on the Dream Theater tinged acoustic power ballad I'll Be Gone where a smoother croon and a more restrained arrangement carry the day. But one song that truly ties this whole thing together is the 30 minute closer Infinity, which largely channels the cinematic splendor of Rule Breaker's similarly gargantuan epic We Walk Without Fear, save with a greater degree of melancholy, balladry mixed with the thunderous moments. He seasoned veteran musicians in the throes of Middle Age and more than half of them passed the half century mark. There are serious signs of this still clad Freight train slowing down anytime soon. The years of punishing his voice on the road since the mid 80s has seen Skeeper's voice, like a fine wine, just getting better with age. And the same can be said for Magnus Carlson's abilities as an arranger and guitar shredder, along with the solid chops of the long time and long time on and off primal, gu- primal fig guitarist Tom Norman, and the somewhat newer addition Alex Bedrock. He's only been with the band nine years though. But in the end, every great album is a team effort and there are no slouches to be found here. This album naturally comes with a great sense of familiarity given Primal Fear's stylistic consistency and while it's maybe a slightly less potent example of the same brilliance that defined Rule Breaker, it's one of the greatest moments in a long running career that still has a long way to go. You know, in the comments down below, what you thought was the better album. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.